in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed to see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy We'll see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy I want to see you Holy Spirit, we pray that you will help us Let the scroll be opened, let our eyes see In the name of Jesus Bless our hearts this morning and we declare that Jesus will forever be lifted in this place. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please be seated. Mighty God. Let's get to the word. Micah chapter 4. Prophet Micah began to speak and prophesy about the the character of the end time church he began to reveal by the spirit the nature of the operation of the church micah chapter 4 and verse 1 and the prophet said it shall come to pass in the last days if we can have it media help us so that we just hurry up micah chapter 4 and verse 1 that the mountain of the lord's house are we together that it shall be established on the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills that's a level of influence that is coming from the church and the bible says verse 2 it says that all nations this says many nations do we have king james there shall come and say come let us go up to the mountain of the lord that means a time will come we will not look for them there will be a grace an investment of the spirit upon us and the bible says that they will say come let us go up to the mountain of the lord to the house of the god of jacob please keep it there it says and he will teach us his ways this is why they are coming to learn the ways of god Please, I want you to understand that, you see, dominion in this kingdom is not an impartation. There is no grace for dominion. Dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the ways of God. Praise the Lord. So that your experience and that of another believer, even though the same Lord is rich unto all, the difference will be based on your depth of comprehending the ways of God. And this is also the biblical index to measure spiritual growth. In the Bible, we are taught that you are growing spiritually when two things happen to you. Number one, when you conform to the image and the character of the Christ in experience. This is the first biblical index to measure growth. Are we still together? I'm told there are overflows together. I bless you. I'm sure you are following. So the degree to which I confirm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. 
there's a reason why I, I like to hear the sound. The, pro the prophet said, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, are we still together? Yes. The degree, it says, my little children of whom I travail until Christ. He was talking to believers. The formation of Christ. Because you see, spiritual realities are twofold in their operation. There is the prophetic dimension of spiritual realities. Realities from the standpoint of the Christ. But there is the experiential manifestation of the same. So, realities can be established in the realm of the spirit, but never find expression within this domain. Are we together? The Bible says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled, but it tells you the location. In heaven, it never said in the earth. It takes faith and the operation of the mysteries of the kingdom to make it settled on earth. And the first earth is you. That vessel of earth. Before your territory. Are we together now? Yes. I'm showing us the, the conferences like these are encounters with the light of God. It's a feast of light. The Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 5 that the light shineth in darkness, it says. And the darkness comprehended it not. It is very important. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus. And he said, having their understanding darkened. He says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. That means in spite of all that Christ has done. Our ignorance, our barrenness when we are bankrupt spiritually. When we do not sustain the requisite level of spiritual understanding. The Bible tells us that we can be alienated from the potential of the life of God are we together this morning so he will teach us his ways in John chapter 14 when you read verse 6 Jesus is teaching and he said I am the way there is Jesus the way the methodology of the kingdom he opens you up to the secrets and the system of God this is very, very important. God is also a God of patterns. I'm taking my time to build so that you will understand. Exodus chapter 25 and verse 40. When Moses was building the tabernacle in the wilderness, the Bible says in chapter 25 and verse 40 that God continued to come down to insist that you make them according to the pattern. Somebody say pattern. There are spiritual patterns. Things do not just happen haphazardly. There is a pattern for healing. There is a pattern for growth. Are we together? There is a pattern for speed. There is a pattern for influence. And that if you want to host my glory, you must ensure that the house is built according to pattern. Go to Exodus chapter 40. And then from verse 33, it's amazing that the Shekinah of God never rested upon that building until they finished the work according to pattern. And then 34 now says, um, please give it to us. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting and the glory of God filled that tabernacle. Consuming fire sweet perfume your awesome presence feels it consuming sweet perfume your awesome presence Listen, believers, hear me. Every time the glory of God shows up, it comes to confirm that his patterns have been followed. The glory of God never shows up until his patterns have been kept. The glory of God is an attestation upon a life, an organization, a ministry that the patterns of the spirit have been kept. 
so when your life reflects the beauty and the glory of God it is a report card speaking to the world that you have walked in keeping with God's patterns are we together the glory of God confirms that his patterns if the glory of God comes upon your finances it is an attestation that you have kept the patterns of the spirit the economic system of the kingdom have been kept if the glory of God comes upon your ministry comes upon your family when your family reflects Psalm 112 it is proof that you have kept certain principles the Bible says in Psalm 112 it says blessed is the man that feared the Lord that delighted greatly in his commands the Bible then says his seed shall be mighty upon earth it says the generation of the upright shall be blessed it says wealth and riches shall be in his house and yet his righteousness endures forever when your life becomes that living epistle it is proof that you have kept the pattern so we are here like spiritual archaeologists to explore the patterns of the spirit shifting is not just a confession transiting from one dimension it is true the bible says the path of the just provided you are just he says the character of your life should be such that you transit from one dimension of glory even to another in the similitude of the rising of the sun unto the perfect day however scripture now says they know not psalms 82 and verse 5 it was a lamentation in the spirit that they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and verse 5 says all the foundations of the earth are out of course then verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high but the tragedy is in the next verse it says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes it takes spiritual illumination light light of the world you step down to my darkness open my eyes let me see that's the miracle in that song will you open my eyes let me see believers sing it one more time will you open my eyes let me see listen to me listen the bible is filled with limitless possibilities that were demonstrated by the saints and the kingdom life itself is a compendium of infinite possibilities please follow me that our work of faith is only limited by the ability of the one who is called Abba the source the sustainer the defender are we together now that the kingdom life please understand this the kingdom life is a compendium of infinite possibilities however that those possibilities are guided and coordinated by an exact body of knowledge there is an exact body of knowledge that is responsible for the various outcomes that we desire. And this conference seeks to bring us to a point of quintessence where we stop shadow boxing. We do not just randomly apply spiritual principles in hope that one of them will work. The Bible says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. So it's a conference that brings us to come up here that we will see better that you know exactly what is responsible for increase you know what is exactly responsible for restoration listen every dimension you require is in christ every dimension your destiny needs is available but do you have the requisite level of spiritual understanding that is tied to that result you know pastor most believers what happens in the body of christ i am not i do not think the body of christ is in ignorance no i do not agree god has helped us in this age and in this time but the challenge is that there is no sequential arrangement of spiritual truth 
So we do not really know what truth is responsible for what spiritual outcome. We engage truth randomly. The blood of Jesus, the fire of the Holy Ghost, prophecy, offering, seed, sacrifice. And the danger is that one of them will walk. But because there is no exactitude to our spiritual understanding, we can no longer reproduce the results. Is God speaking to us? And so we must come to a point where we are not just excited about spiritual knowledge. We are excited about exact spiritual knowledge. I should be able to know that when I'm learning a revelation, I must see its applicability in my spiritual life. Not every spiritual knowledge is important as far as the victory and the dominion of the saints are concerned. Just because it is spiritual does not mean it is useful. So Jesus says, I have many things to tell you. He says, but ye cannot bear them. He says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he says he will guide you. Just because it is truth does not mean it will bless you. You must be guided. Divination uses truth. Mm -hmm. Witchcraft uses truth. So you must be guided. There is an exact body of knowledge. You see, it is frustrating to know what can be. And yet your life never captures that experience. I know God can restore, but why will it not happen in my life? I know God can give speed. I cannot doubt it. The Bible is an attestation of that possibility. People recovered lost things. An archive of these exploits was captured in Hebrews 11. It says, time will fail me to talk of Gideon, Jephthah, Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. Are we together now? Yes. So that we know what is responsible for what outcome. My God, that after service, someone can know that in the next one month, I will take the 10 years I have lost and put it in that one month by a spiritual understanding. Yes, time can be restored in God's economy. It says I will restore the years, not just the things. If all you lose is things you did not lose, but when you lose time, you really lost. So when God begins to restore his focus, because real dominion is dominion over time. Whatever steals your time, stole your destiny. Is God blessing us already? So we thrive on the strength of our depth of spiritual understanding. Jesus shows up and he begins to mentor a group of people, first the twelve. Then the 70. Then as many who were interested in attending his conferences. He started with what we know theologically to be the Beatitudes. He was teaching them another system of government that was similar but um, also passing in excellence. Are we together? And when he gets to chapter 13 of Matthew, then verse 11, please give it to us. Jesus was teaching them. And they were confused as to the parables that he was given. He had to downgrade spiritual realities to use um, a system that the people were, were used to. And then he makes a statement that I want us to read together if you can see. Ready? Please read. It says, he answered and said unto them, uh -huh, Because it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Please stop. He captures this body of knowledge that is allocated for the victory of the saints and he calls it the mysteries of the kingdom. There is an exact body of truth that is privy to those who are in the kingdom. Are we together now? This is very powerful. That means that our exploits is predicated upon our spiritual understanding, our access to this body of knowledge that the Bible calls mysteries. Everybody say mysteries. A mystery is a hidden body of knowledge. 
It's a formula, but it is hidden from the eyes and the knowledge of all. It is privy to a group of people. For instance, there are codes of communication that will only be understood by those in the military. Am I correct? They have communications, they have body languages that suggest certain things, but you will have to be in the military when you are absorbed into that system. Then they open up to you so that they can be communicating and a layman who is not a military Three men may not understand. They are called mysteries. A husband and a wife can have codes of communication as far as the family context is concerned. Pastor can, for instance, tell his wife, get the visitor a drink, and yet the visitor never hears anything. By reason of intimacy, they have established certain codes. Are we together now? In the kingdom, there are mysteries. For instance, there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. It's a mystery that only the sons in light can understand. It says there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. For instance, why will a man dance his way out of shame and reproach? Dancing does not make sense to be a weapon of victory. But it is a mystery in the kingdom. Praise. Why should I sing and dance in the midst of situations and circumstances that are unfavorable? Because the Bible says you will reap in joy, not with joy, in joy. So if you are not joyful, the possibility of the harvest is not even there. These are mysteries. Listen. When things were missing in the Bible, there was a mystery that they engaged. It was the ministry of the prophetic. Alas, master, it was borrowed. He said, don't worry. There is a provision in God's economy where things that are lost can return. And I'm saying it prophetically to someone. Listen, do you know that whatever lives your life is still on earth? That means there is a technology that calls it back. And the bones were very dry. He says, son of man. Listen, just because you could not see the bones did not mean they were not there. They were there waiting for a dimension of spiritual reality to call them back. That means relationships can be called back. Finances, money can be called back. Your passion, your fire for God, the things of the spirit can be called back. Please believe, find a way of believing what I am telling you. It is true. Are we blessed? You are not growing. If your understanding is unfruitful as far as the exact listen when it has to do with our knowing God and pressing into the deep things of God it is infinite we will never exhaust it even in heaven there is room to come up hither we will continue to learn God as a book that never ends are we together now however as far as the victory of the saints is concerned there is an exact body of knowledge that is finite. The knowledge that makes for the victory of the saints on earth is not infinite. It is finite. Like the curriculum of a university, you can hold it. And know that with all humility, I have exhausted the length and the breadth as far as the victory of the saints is concerned. The understanding that the principles that make for victory is infinite already frustrates you from the start of the journey. You are supposed to be so blessed that you no longer try to look for things and you focus on him. He now becomes your project. He now becomes what the continuity of your spiritual pursuit is no longer to get things but to seek him. If you spend your life trying to conjure these principles to work, you live the wasted life, respectfully speaking. It's not to insult you, but to communicate truth. We were not designed to spend our lives hoping that principles work. Your lifetime is too short to be trying and guessing. Remember, we're talking time here. There is a level of accuracy that I must step into. Sort my finances, sort family, sort my health. Be like Abraham that he was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed him in all things. So that now when I go to pray, I do not have any prayer point except to seek his majesty to know him more to serve him more to see to it that his purposes are birthed but that cannot be possible until the things that make for life and godliness are sorted out so he granted us the mysteries of the kingdom that these keys will bring us to a point where we can exercise the dominion of heaven in reality here and now 
Are we blessed this morning? This is what you get in church. You don't get this in a bank. No, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. Why? Because the church of God is the house of God. There is a gate, there is a portal that opens men from that region to the throne of God. When they come, they receive a supply of applicable spiritual knowledge that you are equipped like giving a warrior a sword. You can walk out of this place and say, happy Sunday and know you will return next Sunday with a testimony. You are not hoping. You are not guessing. I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. Dr. Luke began to teach Theophilus in chapter 1 of Luke. He talked about the things that are most surely believed. There are things that you should not be doubting and hoping if they work or not. You should have come to a point of persuasion, unbendable persuasion. Someone pray whilst you are seated. Lord, open my eyes. Strengthen my conviction. Someone is praying in this conference. Open my eyes. I'm tired of guessing and hoping I'm getting it right. There is a way. Someone is praying. hallelujah praise the lord i don't have all the time but i'm going to just be sharing with us maybe one for this service and then another for the next what i call the mysteries of the kingdom did i give my message a title <laughs> call it the mysteries of the kingdom let's call this part one We reign in this kingdom on the strength of the truths and the mysteries that we know. We do not reign by intention. It takes more than intention to reign. It takes more than desire. It takes more than a well-meaning heart. Please listen to me, dear people of God. When we sustain the intelligence of the spirit, you will rise like Satan does not exist. It is true. Hallelujah. Our ignorance will continue to magnify Satan to the degree to which our ignorance remains. That is the degree to which he remains magnified. Knowledge deflates him. Deflates him to a point where he no longer becomes a point and a source of concern because you have been so elevated by the strength of knowledge. He says, I went up by revelation. I didn't go up by desire. I went up by revelation hallelujah are we ready for the mysteries of the kingdom number one the first mystery of the kingdom that i will share with us that is responsible for the strange rising and the lifting of men that can transit any man any organization and any body of people from one dimension to the other is called the mystery of prayer the mystery of prayer Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. Jesus is teaching now. And how many of you know that when Jesus is teaching, you listen to him? Jesus is teaching on prayer. And this is what he says. The Bible says he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. So the only person exempted from prayer is the one who is not a man. This is the first information. Prayer is not for prayer warriors. Prayer is not for preachers. Prayer is not even for desperate people. Prayer is for men. He spake a parable to the end. The morale is that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Are we together now? So he's teaching on prayer. Let's listen to Jesus' thoughts on prayer. Um, I have to rush because of time. Jesus is giving a scenario. He starts by saying there was this judge. Wow. Sin one already is a law court. Are we together now? And then he describes a judge. I pray you never find such in your life. That there's this man who did not fear God. That means the Holy Spirit cannot talk to him and he obeys. And then he did not also regard men. You could not talk to him. What sort of a man is that? Did not fear God, did not regard men. 
this was the judge your destiny depends on such a man no fear of god no regard for men sin two very interesting verse three the bible now says there was a widow look at the contrast a widow is a woman that is supposedly defenseless are we together now he's showing you the excellency of prayer so he starts with a cruel man that seems to have no fortitude for forgiveness or mercy or repentance then he now shows a woman who is supposedly helpless and he said get justice for my adversary and for a while the bible says next verse that this man would not pay attention to her but then he said within himself though i do not fear god nor regard man verse 5 it says yet because this widow troubles me that means there is an effect to prayer that when men pray it's not only their sound they hear there is a sound in the realm of the spirit that moves beyond that horizon the region of prayer and begins to correct things that prayer is a system of negotiation it's a system of kingdom legislature you can be at a point and your prayer immortalizes your presence goes to a region where you cannot go and begins to correct things this is a judge that does not fear God this is a judge that has no regard for men yet a widow uses this mystery of prayer is God speaking to someone and then he says less by her continual coming the key is consistency that means when I am weak prayer can make me strong you may think london will not open up for me you are right until i pray you may think i may not get a job you are right until i pray you think my children will become what other people have you are right until i pray your prophecy about me is correct until i pray it's true that i should fail it's true that my papers don't seem to be coming until i pray jesus is teaching that the saints are not powerless when you understand the jurisdiction of the spiritual realities that prayer can capture it's not just an instrument to respond during emergency no prayer can move things believe me you can grow your way through prayer. You can transit to a newer version of you through prayer. Luke chapter 9. Please give it to us. We have to hurry up. My spirit is fired up. Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. Luke chapter 9. The Bible says as he prayed, two things happened. That must happen to someone after this conference number one is the appearance of his face was altered that means prayer can transform you to a weak from a weak you to a strong you prayer can transform you from a timid lady a timid man the first thing that happened when Jesus prayed was that his countenance I can become a newer version of me if I can pray rejoice not over my yesterday prayer can change me yes i know that i was once saul the son of kish barren of spiritual intelligence not even knowing where the donkey is but as i pray i will find a samuel and i will return back to be one of the sons of the prophet men can grow men can transit they can rise to superior versions of themselves all you see is not all that can be there truly can be more. Apostle, nobody wants to help me in London. I don't know why. I don't have anybody. You are right until you pray. Apostle, I am bound hand and chain and it looks like my life cannot move forward. Ask the early church. They prayed. They prayed angels to the earth. They prayed chains to fall. we are here for you come and do what you do we are here for you come and do what you do
Please sit down. Please sit down. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 tells us that prayerlessness creates anxiety. You know what anxiety is? Anxiety is the natural reaction of man to uncertainty. It is human to be uncertain. There are no guarantees anywhere because men can change. Prayer becomes the stabilizer to a man's life. It says be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing but in that means there is no issue that prayer cannot listen prayer is not the only key but where prayer is not the key is the hand that holds the key in any case you will need prayer in everything by the mystery of prayer and supplication with thanksgiving don't assume he knows your request make your request known make your housing issue known make the issue of your child known make the issue of your health known make the issue of coronavirus known make the issue of your finances known this is the god of heaven i refuse to be anxious i refuse to be perturbed by life i may look weak but there is a government whose jealousy has been invested upon my life and listen let me tell you this prayer is the highest demonstration of humility it is proof that you acknowledge that by yourself and in your strength you do not sustain that ability so you tap into the intelligence of a government that is ancient very ancient with a track record of winning listen to me an attack on your prayer life is a real attack greater than the attack on your finances when your prayer life dies it's only a matter of time every other thing around your life begins to reflect prayerlessness someone in this conference you need to trust god for grace to obtain by the spirit the the grace for prayer and supplication turn the plates down in your house shut your door and say i'm not only a wife i'm a priest i'm not only a businessman you take on your priestly regalia and shut the door and begin to control the spiritual climate over your territory please sit down men who can pray do not take no for an answer be careful when you tell them no you will soon say sorry Hezekiah was a man appointed to death in chapter 38 of Ezekiel of Isaiah and a true prophet Isaiah brought him a report from God you will not recover and he said thank you prophet I honor your office let me talk to God and he turned to God and said did you not create a system of negotiation remember if I die who replaces me in serving your purposes and God said no listen you can negotiate new realms in your life you can re <sighs> if you have not prayed don't trust the result you see let me repeat myself if you have not prayed do not trust the result you see next week I will give you a property don't trust that result until you have secured it in prayer the vacillations of men are we together now the inconsistencies of men will you will have a plethora of heartaches until you learn the excellency of prayer i don't trust anything until it is secured in prayer but if and when it is secured let it change in the physical i do not care because prayer is such a jealous holder when it holds things it keeps them Everybody say prayer. prayer. I believe in prayer. Why do we pray in the kingdom? 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians 16. Give us verse 9. Someone please read. For a great and effective door has opened to me and there are many listen you don't need to find out where satan is just look for where open doors are 
everywhere there is an open door there is contention everywhere there is prophecy there is contention everywhere the attention of god is that's where satan is you don't need to look for where he is he is wherever the word of god is going because he wants whatever god says so if god has spoken through your man of god over your life that this is a season of shift i can tell you when jesus was done fasting the first person he met was satan i hope you know that there is a fast that brings him close to you are we bible students because the unusual angelic activities that happen around your life will cause hell to say they remember satan was once an archangel angels don't come to the earth for nothing when he sees an unusual what is wrong with this family there has been an unusual activity of angels let's find out what god is saying because the angels excel they confirm his word so every time angels are released satan is not exactly omniscient he does not know all things but he can use the operation of heaven to know what god is doing one of it is angelic activities because they signify the word of god revelations 1 verse 1 the revelation of jesus which he gave to his servant john he sent it and signified it by his angel could that be why when prophecies come contentions come too because when you are lifted the name of the lord is also lifted your children are also lifted the testimony of God's grace spreads abroad all over London and so Satan will come because he knows that in your discouragement is the discouragement of many so instead of looking for everybody he finds you and makes uses your life like a painter trying to draw and says that God is not faithful Satan is not looking for everybody He's looking for those that have prophecy upon their lives because the impact of the failure of the word in their life will do him much good. Hallelujah. One more scripture and then we pray. James 5, 16. The Bible first starts from verse 13. It says, is any man afflicted? When you are afflicted, he did not say run to neighbors who cannot help you and open up everything about your life and your family. No. Is anyone afflicted? He says, let him pray. Even if you do not know what to do, start praying. It is in the prayer that direction comes. As they prayed, the Holy Ghost spoke and said, separate me Paul and Barnabas. Help that man. The anointing of the Spirit is upon him. You are stepping into a new dimension. Please help me with the Simba. I'm seeing a dove just come into this building. And I'm seeing 11 people. Please bring them out. Right now as I'm speaking. Right now the power of God is coming on them. Bring them out. Right now 11 people. A new dimension. Fire for prayer. Right to the back. And the overflows. It's time for the fountains to be opened. You call it a shift. Bring them by the power of the Holy Ghost. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, fill me, bring them out, fill me up, God, hallelujah, now listen, 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 the Lord is telling me, um, I want to release, um, um, oh God, God is messing my sermon already, I'm about to release a grace for speed, listen, please hear me, and as I pray this grace, the power of God will come upon you. It doesn't matter where you are. And people will start running physically. I want you to hold them so they don't injure themselves. Father, I decree right now, all over this place, I bring an anointing. Move to a new dimension. Speed. Bring them out. Speed. Speed. 
Speed. Speed. Speed. Step into a new level. Step into a new dimension. I bring you the ministry of the Holy Ghost. I bring you the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Fill me up till I overflow. It's a new season. Liberty Church. We are not teaching cunningly devised fables. These are realities in the spirit that men can transit to dimensions. Hallelujah. We are wrapping up. This is what you get in church. Hallelujah. David. I'm hearing the name David. Who is David? David. David. You are a photographer. David. Who is that? Feel me up. God. Feel me up. You are stepping into a new level. Receive that anointing now. New dimension in the spirit. Listen, listen, in all honesty, let me advise you, there is no point living after this service, because there is still one more truth that I want to share with you, is you came for a conference, don't waste your time and waste your life, so that you can receive something that will shift you. There are certain days in the lives of men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm hearing a name. It's a Yoruba name. Dukbe. Who is Dukbe? Who is that? You are Dukbe. Come. Your life is about to change. What do you do? You work in this church. You are a staff in this church. Is that true? This is what I'm saying. I want to pray for you. Because I'm seeing you climb a ladder in the realm of the spirit. And God himself is bringing you to a new season. In the name of Jesus, I declare. Step into a new dimension. By the spirit and the power of God. Hallelujah. Your mom is sick. Your mom is on the sick bed. This is what the Lord is revealing to me. Who is that? I'm seeing, I'm seeing uh, someone's mother. Um, who is that? An angel of the Lord is bringing me to this room. He's saying the person is here. Is there someone like that? Help her. The power of God is on her someone's mom here who is that please where is she so that we make sure that please huh your mom where is she nigeria you believe that jesus can heal her never forget it here at liberty church jesus still heals here at liberty church jesus still lived in the name of jesus i pray for your mom by the power of the holy ghost let there be healing right now in the name of jesus christ I need to pray for you, not just your mom, you, come. We have to wrap up this service. What's your name? Who is Emmanuel? I'm Emmanuel. What's your name? Emmanuel. Please help us with the mic. Just, just a little volume, thank you. Emmanuel is the name. What do you do, sir? What do you have to do with money? I'm seeing... I'm seeing a machine that counts money, just spinning. I'm an accountant. Where? Bank I work for Wells Fargo. It's true. He's an accountant. Sir, I'd like you to prepare. A lifting is coming for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, a lifting is coming for you. You're also Emmanuel. What do you do? You're a product designer and... It is not only a product designer, there is a call of God upon your life. My friend, God is going to use you mightily. There is a strong teaching grace and a strong prophetic grace. It will not come now, but it will come. And God will use you mightily. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Step into a new level and a new dimension in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Now, please, um, we have to, my God. Where did I stop? I was teaching, oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Bring a lady that shouts now under the anointing to the hearing of everybody. The power of God is coming on someone now. A loud shout. Bring her. Mighty God. The power of God is coming on someone. You are in real estate, but things have been tight. But I'm seeing an anointing coming on you now. It will not be more than two weeks before God begins to shift you. Bring that person now. Believe me. Listen. You see, before you believe a man, find out about him. I know that here and there the prophetic has been abused. I know that people have done a lot of nonsense. But listen, not everyone has bowed to Baal. There are people who have paid the price in the spirit and have a testimony from God. This woman is in real estate. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you in the open, in the presence of everybody. Shift to a new dimension of possibilities. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, die all. Dio, what do you do, sir? I want to pray for you. A big contract is coming for you. Make sure it does not distract you. In the name of Jesus, step into it by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. What do you do, sir? In the name of Jesus, I avert evil from your life. The Bible says the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest they dip their hands in iniquity. I pray for you, you are exempted from evil. In the name of Jesus, now, I set you free. Because what I see in the realm of the spirit would affect you seriously. But I bring you the ministry of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Okay. Praise the name of the Lord. Before we wrap up this service, right where you are, whatever you are trusting God for, you are tired of that level. I'm releasing my faith with you. Lift your voice now in one minute and ask. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Someone who is a believer, lift your voice. You will be surprised. Believe me. I'm releasing my faith with you. I release my faith with you. Lift your voice and ask. You will marvel and wonder at the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Lift your voice in one minute. Ask. I bring to you my secret place. I back you up in prayer by the power of covenant in the name of Jesus Christ. I back you up by the power of covenant, new dimensions, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen. I'm going to be sharing with you a very deep mystery in the next service. This mystery is responsible for the strange acceleration of many. Please, all through the remaining sessions of this conference, I'm told tomorrow is a miracle service. And I'm going to be prophesying and speaking over your life. Listen, I want you to invite your loved ones wherever they are, provided they are within this region. This is not just an issue of the Liberty Church. This is God visiting a territory. Are we together now? And we're going to be praying and speaking. We are going to be speaking to closed doors and gates, Ephata, opening them hither and theta. That's what is happening to that madam on green. I'm seeing a door open towards you. I open that door now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I stand in agreement with the angel over this commission. And in the name of Jesus, we declare that this is a new season for God's people. Young lady, look at me. This one. Lift your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus, there is an anointing coming on you. You will never be the same. 
we decree and declare for everyone who is present here the overflow everywhere be blessed in the name of Jesus I bless you with hunger for spiritual things in the name of Jesus fresh fire upon your prayer altar that as you begin fresh fire upon your prayer altar fresh fire upon your prayer altar fresh fire upon your prayer altar the grace to pray the grace to travel I take away the weakness of the flesh I place upon you an anointing the grace to pray the grace to fast the grace to pray the grace to fast in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Jesus let the name of the Lord be praised in the mighty name of Jesus Christ God bless you celebrate you you will deliver you will bless let it be profitable oh God that we came to your presence let no one leave untouched let no one leave the same let the Liberty Church step into new dimensions in the spirit in the name of Jesus whilst you're standing in one minute just cry to the Lord ask him for a visitation lift your voice and pray someone is praying all of the overflows pray unto you that answer prayer shall all flesh come someone praying is revealing his love is revealing his grace hallelujah this conference among many things is proof of how far God intends to reach to make sure your life becomes a reflection of his glory I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit I believe in what he can do in the name of Jesus I believe it we're going to sit down shortly but the power of God is coming on two people now as I'm speaking I just saw like an open heavens just give me a little volume you see many times when the Spirit of God begins to move to touch people like this it is because he he is moving to honor the name of Jesus this is why he does the things that he does are we together now two people Two people. Majesty, Majesty, Jesus, Kali Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty hand but a life in your hand Sing majesty yeah. Majesty Majesty Forever I am changed by your love there is such listen take it higher there is such i don't know what is happening in this service but there is such a strong anointing of the holy spirit it says and the hand of the lord came upon elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of ahab down to Israel. listen hear me people of god you are immersed under a strong unction it doesn't matter where you are watching from it doesn't matter which of the overflows we're going to sit down shortly but sometimes we need to allow the Holy Spirit to just have that convocation he's just walking through your life changing things from the front to the back the left to the right in the name of Jesus the Son of the Living God all the overflows those watching from whatever nation 
the spirit of the living God the spirit of the living God taking us to higher dimensions hallelujah the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit it says and it says where the spirit of the Lord is that means you can know where the spirit of the Lord is why because there will be liberty this is called a liberty church so you know there is an attestation no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't tear down lie you won't tear down coming Makaparuta shalakatabariada. Coming after me. Hallelujah. 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 Please be seated if you can. And just be sensitive because while I teach the spirit of the living God, the spirit of the living God is going to be giving us visitations. You came for a conference. It is important that believers encounter the power and the glory and the grace of God because you call it a shift. And a shift does not just happen because you desire one. Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1, he asked me to stand and I did not have the strength. Verse 2 says, and the spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet. This is what you get in church. This is what you get in the house of God. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. That's how far you can reach for me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found. Come on, London, lift your voice. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming. Please be seated. Isaiah 60 and verse 1. Shalibra to Scalibra. Now listen, while I teach, I sense in my spirit that more than just enlightenment, there is a grace that is going to be lifting people. Listen, please, I want you to find a way of believing that this is true. God, by this word, you see, the word of God can be spoken and the word of God can be sent. When the word of God is sent, it is a messenger. Like a tray, there is something it is carrying on it. It carries the possibilities of the Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord is telling me to speak to someone. He says, remember not the former things. Listen. As I'm talking to you, the power of God will come upon those people. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, you are coming to the end of that season. That season of shame. Help them, please. That season of reproach. Hear me, I'm speaking to you by the rod of a higher priesthood. That you are coming to the end of that season. You are coming to the end of that season.
Hallelujah. Isaiah 60 verse 1. Jesus. I don't know how this service will turn now. The hunger of a man can touch the heart of God. When people are hungry and desperate, there has to be a desperation in the heart of men. You must desire God in a way and a manner that nothing else can take your place. To feel the warmth of your embrace. That's the kind of hunger that calls his presence. Help me find a way. Will you bring me to oh, 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 you're all I want. Let that be your prayer, London. Hey. sit down Isaiah 60 and verse 1 says arise it was not a suggestion arise he says shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you amplified says arise from the depression and prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new light hallelujah arise because your light is come the last service for those of you who were not around let me just do a quick recap we were discussing that the glory of god please listen carefully the glory of god is revealed as a confirmation that his patterns have been honored god is a god of patterns that means that when you walk with god please listen when you walk with God, you are not at liberty to invent your strategy. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16, that you stand in the way and you search for the ancient part. It says when you find it, walk therein and you will find rest for your soul. Creativity is not required when you are walking with God. It is when you are manifesting the power of God. Kingdom legislature, that is when you will need creativity. The assignment is follow me and I will make you. Follow me. There is a predefined methodology. Please look at me. The kingdom of God operates on exact systems. God is a God of systems and God is a God of patterns. Cain and Abel are about to offer sacrifices and then Cain offers his own sacrifice and it does not touch the heart of God. And Abel offers his sacrifice and Cain is angry. And then God speaking, paraphrasing, said if you followed patterns, it would be received. That means there is a pattern that controls wealth and abundance. There is a pattern that controls speed. There is a pattern that controls intimacy with God. God does not. God loves everybody, but he will not reveal himself to everybody. No. His presence is priceless and there is a condition. He says, he that obeys my command, he it is that loves me. And I will love him and the father will love him. And we will come and manifest ourselves to him. John 14, 21. So you can be born again. You can be a child of God and never be able to host certain superior dimensions of his presence. Because not everything in this kingdom is a gift. There are things that are rewards. If everything were a gift, what then is the reward of obedience? Conditions. Deuteronomy chapter 1 says, It shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to do and observe all that I command you this day, then, then, 
then you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth he says and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you hallelujah praise the lord so this is very important for us to understand that as we desire to see the manifestation of the glory of God across different dimensions of our lives, we must hunger for the knowledge of his ways. And prophet Micah taught us that it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted, established above all other mountains. And then he says that the nations will flow to it. They will tell themselves, come, let us go to the house of the Lord, to the God of Jacob. He says, and he will teach us his ways. The secrets of God are hidden in his ways. The Bible says in, I think, Habakkuk chapter 3 or so, he says that God descends from Mount Teman. And then he says that the light that proceeds from his hand, Amplified says, in that light is the hiding place of his power. The power of God has a location. It hides in his light. So wherever the light of God is made manifest, his power also follows. The power of God is where the word of God is. Hmm. Is God blessing someone already? And so it means that if you are growing spiritually, captured in your experience must be an introduction of new dimensions of god dimensions of his ways just because an information is spiritual and true does not mean it will bless you you have to understand this truth must be sequentially arranged i give you an instance there is something that if you do not know before you learn about prosperity it will destroy you so it's not enough to just have random truth. No, they must be sequentially arranged. This beautiful structure is sequentially arranged. Are we together now? There is a foundation. The superstructure is lifted. There, it is the sequence that brings value to the building. Just because you have all the raw materials there does not mean you have a building. A chef can have all the ingredients for a meal, but it does not mean he has the meal. The chef is a chef because of his uncanny mastery. The ability to combine the ingredients with precision to produce predictable outcomes. So the Lord is bringing us to this point so that he will take away shadow boxing and guessing from our lives. So that we are no longer in the dark. We can predict things. I can know I will rise. I can know I will live long. I can know that no arrow that flies by day or night can touch me. I'm not hoping. He says, for I know whom I have believed. Listen, let me tell you. It is not, um, realities in the kingdom should not only be believed. There is an experience. You can taste and see that the Lord is good. Not only know. You can taste, there is an experience to it, that your life becomes a living epistle, an effulgence of the possibilities of God. So that when you open the Bible, even when it is closed, it is still opened. You are now a continuation of what was written. So if I did not have my devotion in the morning, I don't feel bad when I see you. Now I can read scriptures through your life. You become a continuation of my devotion as I watch your life. Are we blessed? Jesus was teaching the disciples. He was introducing them to the kingdom. The kingdom talks about the governing influence of a king over a predefined territory. And remember in what we call the Lord's Prayer, when he was teaching, he said that we ask the Father to allow the kingdom to come. Thy kingdom come, how? By your will being done. So everywhere his will is being done, the kingdom comes. Are we blessed? Yeah. But that in establishing his kingdom, and rising from one level to the other, we will need to understand that we excel in this kingdom 
by light. Please say light. Spiritual illumination. This is very important. Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus. And you must understand theologically speaking, it is believed that his epistle in Ephesus, his ministry in Ephesus was the apex of his apostolic ministry. Because at that time, Ephesus was a center of commerce, just like London. It was the financial hub of the then world. Are we together? And they were... They were a people who were very enlightened. They were not naive. They were not ignorant people. And they were under the leadership of a goddess called Diana. And so he was teaching them on the things of the kingdom. And then Paul prays a prayer in chapter 1, beginning from verse 15. For this cause I bow my knees, he says, to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Then he says, your heart being enlightened amplified says flooded with light that you may know the word know there is not awareness it is the same word as being used a man knowing his wife fellowship with the mystery dominion therefore is not an impartation dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11, Jesus was teaching and he said, it has been given to you. It has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. These are the secrets of the kingdom by which we reign. Listen, the saints were designed to rise and to manifest the power, the life, the glory, the grace of God on the strength of a body of knowledge that the Bible calls mysteries. Are we together? Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. The prophet was speaking by the spirit and he began to lament. And he said, my people, although they are my people, the Bible says they are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. He says, because you have rejected knowledge, you will no longer be priest unto me. You cannot represent me because you do not have the requisite level of spiritual understanding to defend my interest. Hallelujah. And so we need to be equipped. We need to be equipped with the requisite level of spiritual knowledge. And the Bible says, I commend you to God. Apostle Paul is speaking, mentoring the church in Acts of the Apostles. I commend you to God, he says, and to the word of his grace. He says, which is able to build you up, number one. Number two, to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Then he says, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture, he says, which is able to make you wise unto salvation. Ephesians 4.18, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. You must fight ignorance like cancer. It destroys. It can keep you in the dark. Are we together? So we rise in this kingdom by light. It takes more than desire to rise. Please listen to me. It takes more than desire to capture the possibilities of the kingdom in your life. It will take more than a willing heart. It will take more than sincerity. The only dimension of growth that is natural is biological. Every other kind is engaged. Intellectual, engaged. Spiritual, engaged. Even a madman grows biologically speaking but if your intellect must grow you must engage it if your spirit man must grow you must engage it dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget 
to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye